Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be our best and worst of 2016 makeup products. So I know everybody has been doing just the what they believe are the best products of 2016 to have come out but I kind of wanted to throw out not just the ones that were the best but a couple that I didn't believe were oh so great. So I did pick a few of the ones that I absolutely love and then a few that just disappointed me and I really uh, wanted to like so let's go ahead and get into it okay so we are going to go ahead and start off in the very beginning of 2016 NYX launched their lip lingerie line now I consider these to be some of the best nude liquid lipsticks out there now I have found in order to combat having the dryness of the liquid lipstick, I will either exfoliate my lips first so that way I get all of the dead skin off and whatnot and then put like a um, chapstick or a lip balm underneath one of these and it's phenomenal. It changes it completely. Um, so I only have four shades because I haven't really found too many that I really like. So the ones that I got were Exotic. Satin Ribbon, Push Up, and Corset. I'm really, really glad that the NYX line came out with these and launched them. It set the bar, I believe, for nude liquid lipsticks because they gave us literally almost, I think it's like 20 different colors and varieties for nudes. So it kind of like forced all the other makeup brands to step up their game when it came to the nude liquid lipsticks. Okay, the next product is probably no surprise that I've been absolutely loving that they came out with in 2016, and it is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I don't know if anybody else has does that where the packaging turns like a discoloration there. I don't know. But I have mine in the shade Medium, and you guys, this concealer has changed the game. Like, all I used to use before were drugstore concealers, and those were always good enough for me. But I didn't know you get what you pay for. So when this was the very first high-end concealer I had ever bought in and ever decided to try out, which I'm glad that I did because it is so creamy, it is so rich, it blends out easily, it doesn't make you look cakey. If you use the right primer, it doesn't make your pores look ginormous or anything like that. And I've absolutely been loving this. I know this is a favorite of like everybody's. I haven't watched too many of um, everybody's best of 2016 products, but based on videos from 2016, everybody raved about this. So you guys know this is a good product. Okay, and the next product that I was super excited for that they came out with in 2016 was the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundations. Now, everybody raves about these. Everybody loves these. Whether you have oily skin, dry skin, combo skin, it works for you. You use the right primer, you use the right setting powder, so on and so forth. This foundation works for all skin types. All of them. So I have the shades 208 Sun Beige and 209 Caramel Beige. As you guys know, I do have combo skin. I have a very oily T-zone, and then I do have some dry patches around the outer parts of my face. I have found, though, that as long as I use a pore filler um, and a mattifying primer before I use these, I still get that dewy effect without looking oily or greasy or so on and so forth, which I know is a big concern for a lot of people. These also did claim to be 24-hour wear-proof, I don't know, I've never tested it, I've never worn makeup for that long, um, which I think is kind of how companies get you, is they tell you something was wearable for 24 hours, but nobody actually wears makeup for that long, so nobody ever tests it out, but I actually really, really love these foundations. Okay, and then Maybelline came out with these Intense Lip Paint Color Jolts. This one is in the shade 5 Strip Down. That's actually what I'm wearing on my lips right now. I absolutely love these. They, I think I want to say they're like 8 7 or $8. dollars. I'm not sure. I'll put the price here on the screen somewhere. But these are 
like a perfection between lipstick and lip gloss but it's not either of them it's like in the middle it's like if lipstick and lip gloss had a baby it would be these it's a weird analogy I know just go with it I absolutely love these they're comfortable to wear they I do a light coat so it, none of it runs um, just like any typical lipstick would or a lip cream it does come off throughout the day as you eat and drink and so on and so forth um, I know everybody's big question with these was are they worth the price because it does look so small like that's my hand okay because they are so small um, they are 6.4 milliliters or 0.21 fluid ounces and if you compare this to a regular size lipstick you do get more in this so even though this is like a dollar or two more than a regular lipstick you do get more product in this one you have more control because of the applicator and they're comfortable to wear so all in all this was one of the very very great products that came out in 2016 I do wish they would come out with more variety of colors because I do believe there are eight to ten colors and I do wish they would come out with bigger variety so more shades of nude more shades of red more shades of plums things like that okay and now we are going to get into the worst of 2016 I don't consider these products to be horrible products they just weren't all they were hyped up to be like legitimately people hyped these up and for me they weren't worth the hype so we're gonna get started with the wet n wild color icon ombre blushes and I only bought two, I think there's three or four, I'm not sure, I know there's a purpley kind of one, but mine are in the shade Mai Tai Buy You A Drink and the Princess Daiquiris. Now with these, I knew that they were going to be shimmery. Off the bat, I already knew that they were going to be shimmery just based on the packaging, you, or not the packaging, but the fact that you could see through the packaging, you could see all the shimmer, you could see it on the blush. That wasn't my problem. Okay, the only problem I had with these is how sheen they are. They are so pigmented on the back of your hand when you swatch them. But it's not very pigmented when you put them on your cheeks and all it is is a sheen or a shimmer. So it looks like you put highlighter in the wrong place. So instead of having blush, you have shimmer. That one was in Mai Tai Buy You a Drink. And of course, you can do it to where you just use the bottom color. So you don't rub it into the sheen, you just rub it into this. But that kind of defeats the purpose. Like, in my opinion, the, the, that's pointless. I might as well just put a regular blush on. But like I said, um, they would be great for highlighter purposes um, if you wanted like peachy or pinky kind of highlight on your face that would be great but as far as blushes go these didn't hit it off for me okay and our last worst product of 2016 is by L'Oreal and it is the voluminous liner in Noir and it's the pen one that looks like a triangle shaped one now I talked about this in one of my dislike videos. I don't dislike the product itself. It is very pigmented as a liner. Okay. The problem that I had with this product and still have with this product is how long the tip is. Like that is ridiculously long in my opinion and it makes it very difficult to work with the eyeliner without smudging it into areas that you didn't want it to go which I know you can like practice and make it work and so on and so forth and then you wouldn't have a problem but the only other problem I had with this product which was the nip in the bud for me was the fact that this eyeliner when I do my wing after it dries it looks great fantastic it's matte whatever after so long it transfers up onto my lid now, I don't know if anybody else has that problem or if it's just me or if it's because I have oily eyelids, 
but I did not like that. I wore it, I think it was around the third or fourth time I used it actually. Um, because the first two times I wore it, I only kept it on for a couple hours and then I took it off. Um, but the third or fourth time I wore it, I planned on wearing it for an excessive amount of time during the day. Um, stretched outward of like eight hours or more. Um, and I want to say six hours in, it had creased. Or not creased, but it had transferred onto my lid. Which is a deal breaker for me. Like, if you are a liner and you transfer onto my lid hours after I put you on, that's it. Like, I'm never gonna use it again unless I'm only gonna wear the makeup for an hour or two. Um, this one I believe was like eight or nine dollars, which kind of irked me because my three dollar e.l.f. liquid liner stays on for 14 hours and doesn't ever transfer up onto my lid. So to me, it's kind of like if e.l.f. can make a liquid liner for $3 that doesn't transfer onto my lid, then L'Oreal can step up their game and make a liner that's not going to transfer either. Like I said, I don't know if I'm the only one who had that problem or if anybody else had that problem. If you did, let me know down in the comment section below. Um, if it worked for you or you found something that made it work so it didn't do that, let me know. Um, I had tried going as far as putting this liner on and then putting black eyeshadow on top as it dried and after it was dry. So that way it would kind of keep it from transferring and I found that it still transferred even with the eyeshadow on top. So this one I was very disappointed in. Okay, you guys, and that completes our best and worst makeup products of 2016. I didn't have too many because there wasn't very many products that came out in 2016 that I was like, oh my god, I need those, I have to have those. It's so different than what I have in my collection already. A lot of it was palettes and so on and so forth. Um, you guys know I don't like buying palettes if I feel like the colors that are coming out in those palettes I have already in palettes that I've already purchased in the past, so. And I did forget to mention a couple things just because they were in my bathroom, but we'll just leave it at what it is now because it's already turning into a pretty long video. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comment section below if you guys loved or hated any of the products that I listed, if there were other products that you really loved that you think I should try out and give it a chance type thing. Um, but if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you're kept up to date with when I post new videos because my New Year's resolution was to be more active on my YouTube channel. So, until our next video, I will see you guys later. Bye.